Welcome to Beyond the Night, episode 14. Uh, I've got Ant with me as usual. Hi, you're up. I think we've got Ellis there as well. Hello, you are right. You're not bad. And uh, Neil as usual as well. Yep, I'm here. Um, so it's a close season, so the first thing we thought we'd talk about is transfer rumours, then we'll go on to talk about the Europa Cup. The transfer rumours, Neil, what have you heard? So from what I've seen, it's been quite quiet, um, considering it's the first week and stuff. There's not really been much, too much about. There's a couple of rumours about David Brooks from Bournemouth that are going down, that, that, have, that have gone down. So I think he'll be quite a good signing. But more at the moment is the big news from our camp that it looks like Kelechi is trying to find himself in first-team football. So it, it, it's, a, it's a shock because he's been actually pretty good this season and it was his make-or-break season. He's, he's actually come and performed like really, really well. So I'm just wondering for you guys, is it somebody that you would try and keep for the Europa League? Um, for me, I'll try and keep him for the league yeah. as well because I think he's... I think, as you say, Europa League, but I think with Vardy... I know we've been saying it for the last couple of years of how long he can carry on at this level, but I do think Vardy's going to start to slow down now. So we, we can't be as reliant as we are on him. So I think we need to keep someone like Kelechi who can sort of can play a lot of games. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right on that point. I think he's doing it. I think he's, he's, he'll be a great squad player. I think, personally, when is the African Cup of Nations? Hasn't it been no idea. Yeah, it's not been postponed, though. No, I don't think it has. Okay, because I know he's trying to get back into his international team, isn't it? And he needs. If he wants to get back into the national team, he would want to start every. He want to go to a club that he's going to be starting at. Yeah, me. I think he found his feet. I think he. I think he found his feet. I think he, up front with Vardy, he made a very good partnership, and you know, getting the ball out of his feet, he really found confidence. And it's a shame to see him want to leave. But at the end of the day, if he wants to play first team football, you, you've got to accept it, and you can only say yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's what he wants, first-team football. Will he get it here? I don't know. Um, Celtic striker's been... <laughs> Celtic striker's been linked with us again. Would he be a good buy? Um, knows quite... Obviously knows Rogers quite well. Would he fit in here? Probably yes. Would he start every game? Don't know. It's a big jump from uh, the Pub League to the Premier League. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> with... Um... Celtic is a big, big uh, impact, and I think Nacho could be part of the squad. But at the same time, Nigeria aren't—they've got a decent team, but I can't. How many strikers have they? They've got Musa Igalo, and then they've got him. I don't think there's too many other strikers that I'm aware of that are that, that are that great. And yes, I can see him wanting to compete, but I think Leicester's a good squad for him because he's going to get team football. He's going to make mistakes, though, as we've seen, and. He's got Europa League, so he's going to have the opportunity to start there. Surely experience in Europe, even if it is in the Europa League, is still something that's worth having over going to another club. But the other clubs he's linked with is Aston Villa, West Brom, I think Crystal Palace as well. And these aren't teams that are particularly going to come and set the Premier League alight and aren't guaranteed to score as many goals as us. I mean, if he went to one of those, I feel like he could be a big fish in a small pond. And I think he would like that. To be honest, I think one thing that could won't work out is his wages. He's on a massive wage here, as we know, from Man City. So that won't work out for him. But I feel like if he went, I think he'd thrive at one of them clubs. I'm not going to lie. I think he really would. It's sort of like Zaha, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think he'd do well there. Um, wages aside, he's one of them players that will score goals. Like I say, if Zaha's providing him the ball, Zaha provides easy chances and he'll, and he'll convert them. Um, but it depends what he wants in his career. Does he want to go on to something else or does he want to stay here and be a bit part player? Because until Vardy goes, that's what he's going to be. But do you think other managers can get the best out of him? Because we saw when, can Roy Hodgson get the best out of him? Because, for example, because like with Rodgers, you've seen it this year. Before this year, I was kind of worried about, well, what is he actually going to perform? What is he actually going to do? Because he's, he's looked leggy, he's looked unconfident, he, look, he doesn't look like he was performing at times. Rodgers coming in, he just, changed, he just changed him into a brand new player almost. So coming from that, can a lower team manager get that out of him? Or is it just the point where he, we've kind of improved into a certain amount and then he kind of knows what he's about now, we can just put it in the back of the net for another smaller team? The thing is, saying about Palace and stuff, they, 
they play with free holding midfielders and stuff. So if he did go to Bay, it would be very much sort of hitting on the counter and stuff and limited service. So I get what you're saying about he probably won't score as much there. But I, I actually, with someone like Crystal Palace hitting him on the counter, I feel like Ian Acho thrives off possession based football. I feel like that's, I think he does. I'm not going to lie. He likes to carry the ball, you know, he likes to be, you know, he likes to take his time. Whereas with someone like Palace who want to, you know, attack very fast, would he fit that style actually? I don't. I, I think if he went, I don't think he'd go in the Premier League. I think he'd go abroad. Mm. His style of play suits European football. Yeah, begs the question: Why would he not stay for Europa League then? If he could get an offer from a Champions League club, though. But then you've also we're in a very sticky situation as well because would that guy from Celtic want to come, knowing that Vardy's going to be playing every single game because he's going to be on the bench regardless? That's, that's sort of, we're in a problem where we're going to struggle to attract a top striker because they know they're not going to start. So yeah. we're sort of, we're in the catch 22 with how good Vardy is, but we can't be over reliant on him because mm-hmm. of his age. But whoever comes in knows that they're not, they're not going to be the first, like the main man, unless their level's clear of Vardy and there's very few players that are. I mean, Vardy's getting on now. I mean, I love Vardy to bits. You know, he's a great striker. And I think he can go on for, for another couple of years, but surely, you know, you've got to, start giving him less game time because at 34 now, like... Hmm. He's, you know. he's not, not going to survive a full season of Europa and Premier League. No. Exactly. But that's yeah. where Nacho comes in, surely. We've got a, p- a person that's proven that can do it in the Premier League, that can come up with vital goals at a vital time. So, it depends. Do you th- I, I can't see the club actually budging on him and like going, no, we're not going to, we're going to sell him. Because I just hmm. think it's, he's one of the assets that's kind of a young player that's actually moving on and progressing and works quite well in our squad. I can't see the, the board like asking for a small amount of money. And also, for a small team, do you think they'll be prepared to pay, as, as you were saying, Ellis, prepare the wages? Because he's probably on quite a sizable amount, cause, considering he's come from Man City, where he's probably on a decent amount as well. I don't, I don't think he's the answer to Vardy going. We need a goal machine, and he's not that. He'll score goals, but he won't score 20 a season, I don't think. I disagree with that. I reckon if, if Kelechi Inacio was up front in his own, I reckon he would. I think Inacio in front of goal is actually a really good finisher. We've seen it, you know, when he has when he's in front of the goal and when he shoots, I back him to score 99% of the time. Obviously, sometimes he gets his feet muddled up, but long-range shooting, short-range, he's very good, in my opinion. Mm. He looked really good when Perez, he was playing sort of off Perez. They sort of linked up really well together, but I, I more agree with James. I don't think he. I think he's limited to sort of how far he can go with Leicester and stuff. I don't think he's ever going to be the main man. But then what do you? Th- yeah, because I'm just looking at his stats now. So Jamie Vardy's played uh, t- 23 goals, seven assists. Kelechi Inacho has got 10 goals, three assists. But Jamie Vardy's minutes per goal ratio is 149. Kelechi Inacho's is 132. So he's got a better goal to minute ratio than the current Premier League top scorer which pretty much tells you something because bearing in mind he's had to come into games and as, as a bit part player and actually score some vital goals like he has against um, Everton and stuff like that Are they cup games or Premier League? Premier League uh, let me just check Leicester City top scorers I think, I think that might it's... be all together this season yeah that might be all scores, all fixtures. Yeah, I, I think that might be everything combined. Regardless of me, I think that Ian Acho is a perfect player to come off the bench. Yeah. I think I think last season I would have said no, but this season is really proven to, to the Leicester fans. And I think Rogers that, uh, look, you can rely on me. And, you know, he's even pushing for a start in the, in the, in the team. And when he does start, he, he does make things happen. So, mm. and if right. he's getting older... Like he's the perfect, he's the kind of pacey player that can put it in the back of the net that I think can fill in for Vardy. So by selling him, I think they'll make, they'll make a big, big mistake. It's his choice at the end of the day. Um, I don't think Rogers likes him. Discussed this before. I don't think Rogers likes him. If he starts, he's always off at half time or 10 minutes after. He doesn't give him the time to improve. Um, so I personally don't think he likes him that much. Yeah, it was the weird one for me was the Bournemouth game when we, we're, they're down to ten men. They've lost Ake, arguably their best player, um, especially in the defensive part. Um, you could have kept him on and then just kind of 
rolled in a couple more because it naturally was created chances and actually looked like one of the most prominent players at the time. So I thought it was a bit stupid of him to, to take him off and then what happens after is what happened. But I know what you mean. A few times he's been taking Nacho off, like the Arsenal game where Nacho was one of our main goal threats and then he put on Perez and changed the formation slightly. So I, I think I, I agree. I think, unfortunately, Nacho is just... I don't know what he's done to get on the wrong side of Rodgers, but there's definitely some turmoil there. I think it could be down to trust, to be honest. That's what I'm saying. Down to trust. And, you know, does Rodgers trust him to go on the pitch and, you know, bag that goal that he needs? And, you know, he's still very, very young as well. But then, you know, we've got a very, very young squad. So something's got to have happened between maybe, you know, when Vardy's been playing, he's had said something behind the scenes. But I personally think that he'd, he'd do well and he, he should stay. I think so. I think so as well. Yeah, it's a tough one. So I think transfer rumours, um, Ant's favourite, Ben Rama. They're in the playoff <laughs> final. Um, if Brentford come up, I can't see him going anywhere. I think he'll stay a year with Brentford to show his loyalty. <laughs> um, I think if we try and prize him away, he's probably looking at, what, 50, 60 million? <laughs> I think whatever happens next year, he'll be playing Premier League football. So if Brentford lose their game, He'll, he'll move. But if they win, he's, as you say, he'll be there next season. So I was thinking about this recently as well. So we saw somebody like Ryan Sessegnon, who's kind of, he was linked with a lot of moves to Tottenham and stuff like that. When the following came up, then he was like, a, he didn't really quite hit form. And then they went back down. He went to Tottenham and I've just not heard from him ever since. Do you think that could be the case as well with somebody like uh, Ben Rama? He could just take the Premier League or it might not be the right league for him. For me, I'd say he he's sort of like more like what Madison was in the championship than what Sessignon is. Because like Sessignon, even in the championship, looked a bit lightweight at times and stuff. And then in the Premier League, he's been bullied quite a lot when he's play, played. But Madison, he's sort of he's one of those players. But it, sorry, Ben Rama is one of those players that if you sort of give him something, he'll try and give you something back, kind of thing. So he doesn't seem too afraid of a physical battle. I think I think you're right, but I, th- I think that Neil's point is he's, he's unproven in the Premier League. Mm. So only time will tell. Some players hit the ground running, and some players don't. You won't know until he plays in the Premier League. Yeah, and twenty. It's got all the attributes to succeed in the Premier League. Yeah, we've done twenty-five million for Madison, but with the squad that we've got, do you think as well, just as part of this, do you think we'll have to sell before we can buy? Because one thing I was reading as well is that Mendy looks like he might be signing a new contract as well. Yeah. And that's a weird one because Ro- didn't Rodgers come out and say that he's one, one of the ones that, that's definitely leaving? And then as soon as we don't get Champions League football now, we're, we're suddenly giving, giving him a new, new contract. It's weird. And personally, I, I do think that we will need to sell Ben Chilwell to be able to buy a top-class player. I don't think we're going to go out there and, you know, with training ground, new ground, well, expansions are you know, loss of 20 million last season as well, you know, and coronavirus. It's tough times at the moment with finances, to be honest. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we're going to have to sell to get people in. Um, and then they'll have to make decisions on who they sell and who they don't sell. I think Mendy's a strange one. He's not really played much this season. Um, and like I say, as soon as you've got a Europa, it's like, well, we might need him. Um, I think we were relying on that Champions League money, if I'm honest, because it's quite a lot. Yeah. I think yeah. I was reading somewhere as well that we were we had William Carvalho all but done as long as we got Champions League. Yeah. So it might be that we're keeping Mendy now, but and William Carvalho won't be coming in. Yeah, and a lot of the targets, I bet a lot of the provisors will be that we got Champions League. Hundred mm. percent. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, that's our own fault as well. It wasn't rel- we were relying on other teams to slip up, and they just didn't. And then on the last day, we just need to man- beat Man United, and they weren't even that great, to be honest. They were just they mm-hmm. weren't that amazing. If we capitalised on some of their, mis- their mistakes and we challenged their defence more, we could have got a result where we're in the ch- this spot where we're getting Champions League. But I think it just depends on because obviously a lot of these players. You saw Madison's face by the end of it. I think he really wants to play in the Champions League, but. It might have been a bit, looking back at it, it probably was a bit too much too soon because we would have been in that pot four position and we would have got absolutely torn apart. 
uh, by a top team in a, in a tier one position. So it would have depended on the lineup, but it was it wouldn't. I think everybody likes to think, oh yeah, because we were in pot one last time. I think pot one and pot four make a massive difference to our champions. How we saw the Champions League. Yeah, no. I was going to say we've seen we've said it before. Pot. If you're champions, you go into pot one, um, as well as the other European giants. So you generally get a two, three, and four. If we'd have gone up, we'd have gone to a pot four because our coefficient I think is twenty two, which is quite low because obviously we've not played in it. Um, and then you get everyone. That, some of the teams that end up in pot four get that group of death with Juventus and some of the top tier teams. Um, well, that'd be great to see Barca down here. You don't want to lose like 14 nil on aggregate, do you? Yeah, as fans, it would be great as an experience, you know, visit them grounds or let them, obviously them them teams come to the King Power. But I think I, looking at it, I was angry at the time, but I'm kind of glad, like you said, that we, we got Europa League because, you know, it's more of a, it's a competition that we can actually go and actually, you know, probably win. Although there are some very good teams in there. I say we would push to win it, I'm not going to lie with the top manager that we've got in a top squad. I'm just really hoping that they bring players like Luke Thomas and they train them and they get them first team experience and get them Europa League experience because he's looking like a really good player. However, I don't know how much defending work he actually does because I think he's a left winger. So if we do sell Chilwell, that position is going to be, we can't have Fuchs playing that position all season. Is He looked tired even in the, um, what's it called? Even the Bournemouth game. So I, I don't know how many legs he's got left in him as well. So I, I agree, but I think we need to sell before we buy. But at the same time, I, I don't know how much more we can actually do because it's, it's, it's um, yeah, we just, I think we'll have to just recruit more and use players like Hamza Chowdhury and stuff like that that are coming from the under-23 squads and bring them in to the first team, especially when it comes to like the strength and depth that you need for Europa League. Yeah. I think you're right, and I know you said, but you all seem to agree, but Europa League's better. And in terms of playing and stuff, and actually progressing in the tournament, it probably is better for us. But financially, missing out on the Champions League was sort of huge, which is why we're going to have to look at the Youth Academy more. And that could be a good thing for us. It could be. No, that could be a good thing for us. That that will be a good thing for us. In fact, hundred percent. Could. What do you the think? Youth through. Yeah, I think it depends how far you get. If you can get past the group stage, then yeah. Um, group stage might be, a, we might get some tough ones in the group, but if you can get past the group stage, then yeah, I think we'll go quite far. The, the, although it's a European competition, it's not seen as a good European competition anymore. It's not like the UEFA Cup used to be. It's kind of a secondary one, which is why in the later rounds, you could get a Champions League team that's dropped out in their group stages. So bring on Celtic in the quarters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, yeah, I was looking at the, the people, if you go out in the pot, if you go out in the group stages um, in the Champions League, it still grants you like 30 million. But it, I think Arsenal, when they went to the Europa League final, it got them 35 million. So there is a massive difference in money. But if we were relying on it, then it, I don't know. It was, I feel like beating a dead horse this way because it, it was our fault that we lost it and just the way that we did it. My queer, my, I don't, I'm a bit, I won't say pessimistic, but I'm just, I feel like this four might continue into the next year um, in terms of like spiraling down just in the way opposite that it happened when we were in the great escape, we had a crap season. Then we picked up at the end and we took that into the beginning of the next season. And from that, obviously Vardy's got the golden boot. We've got Europa League. We've not, it's starting much quicker the, this year than compared to a normal like um, transfer window and having a summer off. I agree. I really do agree with that. I think new new faces are definitely needed. Squad depth is definitely needed because uh, the games were becoming thick, thick and fast this season. You know, with it being starting so late, they want to finish it at the same time as they would have a normal season. So it's going to be interesting to see. But I definitely agree that we could take this into the new season, but hopefully we don't. Obviously, I think it'll be key for us if we're not going to do it. We need some new faces to freshen it up and stuff. Because I think if we don't sign anyone, then there's a real chance that it will carry on. Yeah, and we didn't sign anyone in January, and look what happened. Well, we signed Ryan Bennett, but that's about it. I mean, what a signing that was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, said, I said it at the time as well, but all of our sort of rivals for top four were signing players, and we signed Ryan Bennett on loan. And it, I think I still say it now, but not signing a winger in January cost us. Well, like Man United are in free fall, bought Bruno, Bruno Fernandes and finished third. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. It literally is that one play where they needed Bruno Fernandes and we need a winger. Yeah. It's as simple as that. They needed that. We need the winger. And I reckon if we did get the winger in, we would, again, have a great season because it is literally a winger that we need. Mm-hmm. And, and along with, you like know, that. maybe rotation. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm I mean, sorry. is a squad at the minute because them 11 can have a really bad game and they just get picked again because there's nobody that can come in that's going to change the game. Mm-hmm. I think towards yeah. the end of the season, it didn't help with the amount of injuries we had as well. So coming into next season, Ricardo is not going to be fit. But I think and then I Johnny Evans will miss the first three games as well because of his red card. So we are looking... So they're two big players that we're going to have to go without. So talking about Ricardo, there's been lots of rumours about him going PSG. If PSG came in for him, mm-hmm. I think he'd go. Oh, I, I think he's, he said in, he was in an interview and he said it himself that... You know, he would stay if Leicester got Champions League football, but if not, then he would consider options elsewhere. Uh, I think with the injury, it might benefit us, and coronavirus, it might ben- benefit us a little bit where no one wants to get him because he's injured. But I can still see someone coming in, unfortunately. I could see him going to PSG, for sure. I think that's his like, boyhood club that he loved, hence why we got him, I think, from Nice, where it was like it was probably working his way up to going to that, um, that, that club. So... I can see him leaving, but as you were saying, yeah, I think that him having the um, injury is going to really put people off. And uh, when it comes to these top teams, I think coronavirus hasn't really made that much of a difference. Uh, you'll see Man United and Chelsea and I wouldn't say Liverpool as much, but these bigger teams just splashing the cash because financial fair play has been basically abolished. So these teams, the top six is just going to get bigger and bigger. And um, it was coming to a point now where you had teams like us, Wolves, Everton are going to be up for it next season. Uh, with their new manager, um, Sheffield United will do like a decent job as well. Where they were kind of closing that bracket between like the bottom and then the top six, they could basically like look at Wolves. They beat um, they they beat Man City twice in the season. So we're looking at them kind of teams. It just seems like that gap's just going to be widened straight back out again, and we're going to see the traditional top six just owning their positions as usual. And we're changing the uh, subs that we're allowed next season as well. That is yeah. just going to be a massive advantage for the top four. I, I genuinely do think the Premier League are starting to see, oh, oh shit, oh, you know, look at these players, you know, look at these clubs, sorry, you know, uh, they're, actually, they're catching the top six, the normal top four up. We need to, you know, do something about it. And they are starting to do stuff about it by, you know, abolishing financial fair play, which is bang out of order because Man City should have been banned. And that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to go on to Man City, but yeah. uh, no. It's... I'm going to say one thing on the Man City ban which everyone forgets, we did the same thing and got out. Yeah, in the, yeah. We should have got a goal. It was, um, it was um, Rudkin's son that set the business up, weren't it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Nick was telling me about it. Yeah, champ- uh, championship to get out the championship, which, you know, you know, fair play, but, you know, it's Man City that we're talking about right now. So there's sort of levels to it, though, isn't there? And how much they're doing. Yeah, they're but we're, you know, we're left fans. We're, we'll accept that one, but not Man City. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I was reading. I was reading yesterday about Man United, the Chevrolet deal. Chevrolet paid them five hundred and fifty million for that deal for a plus wow. on the shirt. Yeah, half a billion for that sponsorship. That's what it was worth. Jesus, imagine that. That's yeah. That's more than anything else that we'd ever get. So it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've let- got the Tories on board now. I know that does sound a bit dodgy, doesn't it? People that pay a lot of money to Thailand are now giving money back to the tourism board. <laughs> um, so let, let's go on to the Europa League. Um, so Ellis has got his badges on his shirt, so he must be well excited. Yes. <laughs> um, so Arsenal won the FA Cup. They go straight into the Europa League. Um, they go into the group stages with us. Spurs go into the qualifying rounds. And Wolves drop out the Europa places. However, if Wolves win the Europa this year, they go into the Champions League. Wolves in the Champions League will be. Oh, it's just like. Well, do you know if that happens? I would. I, I think I'd cry. <laughs> that can't happen. That can't happen. Strange things have happened. Um, so what dates? Um, so the, the first date is the second of October. That's the group stage draw. Get in there. Match day one is the 22nd of October, which will be our first match in Europe. Hopefully we can be back 
by that time. We're looking at October return, isn't it? To yeah, football, that's fans. what they're saying. Between 15 and 35% capacity. Oh, all right then. We're not getting in. <laughs> <laughs> um, finals, 26th of May. Hopefully we're back in the ground then so we can all go to the final. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the seedings. No. We're quite low, aren't we? Because we've not had experience. Yeah, so there's four pots. We're in pot three. Pot one, Arsenal. If Spurs qualify, they go to pot one as well. There's also Roma, Napoli, Leverkusen, Villarreal, Siktas, Sporting Lisbon, Moscow. Pot three, Galatasaray, Red Star Belgrade. All the great clubs you don't want to go to. (laughs) Um, And our coefficient's 22, because obviously we've hardly played in the tournaments. It means that we'll get a good team, so we'll get a good time out somewhere on pot one. Yeah, and it's the same rules, isn't it? Where you can't get a Premier League team. Yeah, you wouldn't want to face Roma or Napoli. But at least it'll be a good day out. Yeah, it would be if we're allowed to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, like I say, if you can get out of the group stages, you get we get a pot one, a pot two, and a pot four. Pot mm-hmm. four ones are, are, are some great teams in there, like Zoya. Luanska from Ukraine. That'd be a great day out. Sounds like he's yep. reading more with five passwords. There we go. <laughs> Often <laughs> higher than before. Yeah, um, that'll be good. Rich. Oh, Kramrich. Yeah, because I say Kramrich, he'll get, he'll get his revenge against us. Don't you worry, he'll get four goals <laughs> again. Yeah, dude, if you get past the group stage, then you've got a good chance. It's just getting past the group stage. I think it's top two go through, isn't it? Yeah. And there are, there are some good in pot two. Although Victoria Pleasant, I thought they sold taps. <laughs> <laughs> they are on the side, just like a football team as well. Nice. I, I think the, the only thing about the Europa and talking to some Man United fans as well as Wolves fans, you want to stay clear of the Ukraine because they've had rights probably in Europe. Because mm. last time... Yeah. A few Maybe just from the fans' perspective, or just from the fans, fans getting there, they're just proper ultras, like they just want to fight, nothing else. We're right so- then, we're going undercover, no Leicester shirts, yeah. all black. We are not showing that we're Leicester fans. <laughs> my, we're face, my, my skin complexion might give it away. Don't think there's really <laughs> bad people in, in Ukraine, to be honest. No, but in some of them countries, we, we joke about it, the racism is diabolical. Yeah. Yeah, if, if that was the case, I'd give that one a miss. <laughs> Young boys, you'd go there. That's only Switzerland, isn't it? It's nice there. Yeah. I'd, do, I'd just wear one of their T-shirts. I'd like them supporting them. <laughs> just tend to speak French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just makes you laugh that Spurs have to qualify and then they go straight into pot one. Hmm. I, don't, just, I don't understand that. Well, I do understand it, but I don't agree with that. Why? But they should go straight into pot one, even though they finished below us in the league. It's because of their coefficient. They've played in Europe so many times. You have yeah. to, which is why we need top five every single year, because you have to keep playing in Europe and Europe. The chances are we're not going to win the league again. Yeah. Because the bigger clubs are just getting bigger. Yeah. So you need to just play, in, even if you have to play in the Europa for the next few seasons. It, it, it gets the, the squad depth better and then you work your way into the Champions League. I it's think it's, but it's going to be harder this because I was on a, a podcast with a Chelsea fan and a, a Man United fan as well and we were all saying this top four this year has been poor. We've just been relying on each other just to slip up um, and just make a mistake so the other team can scrape by with the draw kind of thing. And that's, that's definitely changing next year with Mourinho coming in from when we played him, it looks like he's got his Mourinho set up in Tottenham, bang on. Uh, Ancelotti, it seems to, he out-tacticked um, Brendan Rodgers when they came here. And they've, for us, they've got a better squad than us as well. So you're looking at them kind of teams and them kind of players and you're going, are we going to get champion? Are we going to get Europa League as well as playing the Europa League? Because like Everton and Wolves won't have it. Well, we'll still see about the Champions League. But they won't have the squad depth. They, they have more squad depth than we do. It, yeah. it is a difficult one. I mean, 
if you get into the quarters of the Europa, then you've got to give it everything into that and sod the league because that can get you into the Champions League. Let's not forget, if you win the Europa, you go straight into the Champions League and the money for that's huge. So I what think it's different. What that put you in, though? Pot four? Yeah, you're still going to pot four, but it gives you that money boost of going into the Champions League. Okay. And I, I think... Peasant... Again, you're going to rely, rely massively on squad rotation for that. Yeah. It's just a vicious cycle, isn't it, for us? But and that's why I think a year in the Europa League to bring these young players... You know the, you know the team that got battered by Porto? Um, the Damari Gray, Harvey Barnes, uh, Ben Hamer. They're the... Well, before it was them, but them kind of equivalent players that are just on the fringe or just outside the top 25 they would be the players that you potentially would play against the, the tractor farmers in Sweden kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no offence to Swedish tractor farmers, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think but it's going to be that our squad's not deep enough. What point do you go? Do we go Europe or League? Because you don't want to give it all in the Europa, which we might not win, get to the semi-finals and finish 11th. No, I don't want to finish 11th. No, no, I think we should get. I think what Rudkin needs to do is he needs to sit down, sell Ben Chilwell, get Chilwell out the door, get Tagli Figo, whatever his name is, Fika, I think that's how you say it, 20 million, and then splash the rest of the cash on, you know, some of the players and sell some other players if you need to. Or is it worth just going for the middle of the road, just getting all the decent players that have come from the, that have been relegated this year? Because I bet you they'll be going for cheap because of Corona and everything. And there's some decent ones in there as well. This year, yeah, exactly. this year, the talent in the relegation zone sort of better than it I mean, normally is. Callum Wilson for ten million. Ryan Fraser still a free agent. I mean, yeah. there's there's two players there that would probably walk into the well, not walk into the team. But add squad depth. Add squad depth. And got who else is there? We could sign Willian on a free as well. He would be a good addition. We can't get his wages. Jefferson yeah. Lerma. I know. I know that might sound, might sound stupid, but he'd be good backup for Wilfred Ndida. Mm. Very good player. Yeah, and mate. Also, when you look at uh, when you look at Watford, they've got Delafeu, they've got Star, who Decore, Decore. There's some decent players that have gone down this year. Yeah, I think Campbell name been branded around again. I think we're gonna. I think we are gonna go for Campbell as well. Yeah, for one player. <laughs> it makes he's sense. like the one Norwich player I'm not that keen on, but I bet you now I say that he'll come here and do well. He, he, I think he'll play really well alongside Madison for kind of, he can switch out with the Tillemans because he's got that kind of ability to get a ball and drive with it. So if he gets a ball, drives, gives it to Madison, Madison puts it on a plate for a striker. I think that could be a formation that could work really well for us. And then Ndidi just doing Ndidi and um, holding that back line. Are we going to keep hold of Ndidi though? I can't see anyone paying how much we're going to charge for him this summer. And we've, um, we've realised as well that we, we absolutely got a... We, we made Man United look stupid for paying 80 million for him. But it was just all the circumstances where they needed an English player, they needed a centre-back, they needed a captain, a leader. So I think other clubs will be put off buying our players just because of that reason. We drive a hard bargain. So it, that, mm-hmm. that happens both ways, don't it? We drive a hard bargain, that guy. And then if you want to drive a hard bargain, if you want Ben Rama, then give us 120 million. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening now. All the, we, what we did, did um, all the other clubs have gone the same way. I mean, Bournemouth, we went for Ake in January and got quoted. 60 million, million. million. That's what they can do. Because and I just got for 40 did. million to, um, well, he's a, it's, I think he might be going soon to Man City, right? Yeah. yeah. So, because we did what we did, we made a stance against the big clubs. Now everybody else is making a stance. So it doesn't help us much when you're trying to Here, buy players. Here's one as well. I heard that, uh, like, kind of, uh, off Twitter, which is not the best at times, but John Stones is going for twenty million. Take would that it, be a player it. that you could take that, that you think would be good in our squad? Do you know what I feel like at Man City? He's a small fish in the big pond. Mm-hmm. Coming to Leicester, I reckon he would actually do really well, like he was at Everton. Because at Everton, you didn't see these mistakes in him because he didn't have mm-hmm. pressure on him. He knew that he was the best one there. But at Manchester City, you know, it's different. You know, he, he wants to, you know, be like the, the, the Laporte, etc. But it's very hard for him to, to do so, and it's got massive pressure with the with the fan base and the manager, etc. I think he'd do well. I I don't think Evans might not last next season. He's getting on a bit. Um, he's losing his pace. We've got, we haven't gone for the first three games, so 
we're going to struggle the first three games anyway without him. So I think we need a back three probably next year. And Stones will be perfect in that back three. He'll play, play most games. He's got the experience of Europe as well. And I think he could play, he's decent at playing the ball over to the wingers, which I think we've missed a bit, a little bit. We've, a lot of the time, we're very dependent on going through and Didi to dictate all the play, even if it is a 10-yard pass to go to a, uh, a Tillemans or something. Everything goes through him, which is good for a defensive point of view when we're trying to get a ball, win a ball back, which makes sense. But when we're playing out from the back and Didi's dropping really deep, and you're like, well, if we can just get the ball up to somebody quicker and break better from that... I think that's where Maguire did benefit us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's okay. like you say, a lot goes through Ndidi, but he doesn't look particularly comfortable on the ball. Like, he's brilliant, like, winning it back and stuff. But on the ball, it's always been sort of an area that you do sort of not feel 100% confident with him. It's, it's like it's like Bournemouth. We've, we've only got one game plan. Bournemouth sussed us out. Yeah. Just, we'll stop the ball going to Tillemans. We'll just stop your service, which they did. You stop the service mm-hmm. and, and we've got no plan B. And I think that's what the problem is, is that... Yeah. We've got no plan B and, and we struggle. So teams will know that. I mean, when we won the league, counter-attack was our thing. We knew what to do. We counter-attacked. It worked game in, game out. Then after we won the league, everyone sussed us out and said, OK, then we'll stop the service. You're not getting the service to break. And the next season, we struggled a bit. It, it's kind of having that plan A, B and C. You look at the Man City's Liverpool. If things aren't working, they both managers know what to do to mix it up a bit. Mm. And it, they they, re, they recycle against against every every other team. When they win, they don't keep the same. They recycle because they know that teams are oh, that they're going to play the same. So I think that's what we need to do. I think Rookie and Disney need to go out in this window and just get a couple of transfers through the through the door, so we can so we are actually able to do a plan A, plan B, and plan C. And I think Slamana, for me, in my opinion, I think he'd do very well. And I think he did do very well with the chances that he had when he was here. I, I'm a massive fan of him. I do like him a lot. You see, I was in the beginning and I was like, Smiley's biggest fan. So I was like, right, him and Vardy will work really well together. But the dude can't even sort his feet out right from time to time. I remember him just missing. Like, he's standing in front of goal. He just needs to get some part of his body on the ball and he just, it goes through his legs. So he misses. And that was kind of an Inacho. issue. Inacho was Inacho the same. Was, yeah, but the difference is, Inacho had age on his side and... Simani's now has lost his pace. He looks he lost his confidence. I don't know how well he's going to do in the air. And also, I, I really don't think he's the kind of signing that Brendan Rodgers really wants in the side. One thing that's baffled me, and it's baffled me for two seasons now, is we whoever plays on the wing whips balls in. So we play what you'd call a traditional English game, put it on the wing, whip it in, striker heads it. Vardy can't really head a ball. So it just makes no sense why we've got no one in that role that could do that. Guess when I had Danny Ings in there. Someone can actually had a lot. With us crossing the ball, I, I, I hate that. I really, really it's, do hate that. It's the most frustrating thing. thing and I'm, it's mainly all Brighton as well. Like, he'll run down the wing, just head down and blindly co- cross it into the box. Yeah. Like, it worked when we had sort of two strikers, two in, the strikers in the box, but it doesn't work when we've got Bardi in the box who's not... He's all right in the air for his size, but he's not the kind of player you want to be trying to sort of play, play across into time after time after time. So... I almost think we need to move away from like players like Albrighton and bring in new wingers. I also feel that with Albrighton starting every, with Albrighton starting the games, the game literally revol- revolves around him. So you'll notice that the ball will always go to his his right hand side, and it will just keep whipping it in every single time. And we saw that as well from the restart. It ha- yeah. kept on happening several times. Yeah, I think somebody like George Thomas is a better example of somebody that can put in a cross when he needs to. But then has the vision. He always, if you look, he gets the ball, looks up straight away, and is like, right, who can I play it to? So for the game against Sheffield United, he played that kind of, he cut the ball, cut a load of players out, and played to Perez to have scored. So I think that's the kind of player that we kind, of, that we need to kind of lock in. And from from a wingers perspective, he's not the best, but he's a great squad player. But we can't be relying on somebody from the under 23s to like basically win the league, which we can't, we, we, sorry, maintain Champions League spots. So, but I think his crossing style, he has the ability to whip in a ball and he's pretty good at it. But also he gets his head up and he has the ability to, right, who's it going to? Who's free? Where all Brighton just kind of heads down, right, this is going somewhere towards the middle and nobody really comes close to it. Vardy tries, but against centre-backs, he's not got a chance really, unless they're really terrible, like a Newcastle or something. Yeah, and that's probably the problem we had since lockdown. A lot of the teams we played had two big centre-backs and they were just heading the ball out for fun. 
Yeah. yeah, and also injuries didn't help as well. We couldn't play through the middle with, uh, and we just didn't seem to get Madison and stuff on the ball enough. And that falls down to John Rudkin with his lack of signings. And, well, yeah, it would, it would have been Rudkin last season, last summer. Now you've got Conjurton, so we'll probably buy someone. You know, the, the dream team, you know, going to do wonders, they are. Yeah. Can't wait for Jordan I for next season. Jordan I, be... Ricky Lambert. I think we'll get some <laughs> Exeter to sit. What's that? We'll get some youth players from Exeter City. It'll be good in four years. <laughs> Age 12. That's the thing. That's the thing with us. We never go out and we never get the ready-made player. And I feel like that's what we just need to do. We need well, to just go and get one ready-made player. I think we did it with Tielemans. I yeah. wouldn't say he's the ready-made player, but he is a very, very good player. But not quite ready-made. Maybe for our team, yes. But yeah, if you understand where I'm coming from. But we need like, the ready-made winger and we'd be good. So I think we've got that in terms of like a centre-back in Soyuncu now. He's got that kind of, I know he's a bit of rash towards the end, but I think he's got that ready-madeness that he knows what he's doing. He's played all the games pretty much and he's going to be central to that defence now. So we just kind of need somebody on that level. But the problem is they're going to cost you an absolute fortune and our mentality is to get the young players and train them up with a manager. So I get what you're saying, but I, I just, with a Madison, for example, he, he just hit the Premier League running and was fantastic. But if we were to buy Madison now, if somebody team was going to buy Madison, he would be worth, or we try and buy a Madison equivalent from another team, he'd be worth 60, 70 million instead of 25. The thing is, we're always going to be classed as a buying club because we buy young players cheap, we train them up, we get them good to 60, 70 million, and then we have to sell them to buy new ones. So it's that vicious cycle that the bigger clubs got out of. And the only way they got out of it was by spending big on foreign players. Um, so we'd have to change a whole philosophy. It works for us, but it only works for a short period of time because then, then players move on. Like we did with I think it has worked over the years. It, it has worked over the years. Yeah. We've produced some very, very good players, but I think now is a time where we need to transition and we need to start you know, looking at the big boys, it's like, looking at getting these players. Like Leon Bailey would come here. He would 100% come to Leicester. Just go and buy, go and buy him. It's like Andy, him. I don't know if you saw what Andy King was saying this morning about the... He was saying the same thing, but now's the time that we need to invest heavily to move on as a club. It, I think that, that's a play that's coming out of the club. Yeah, you know? he plays on 50 grand a week that's, that's coming to the end of his contract. So, but, and also, he, as much as we slate Andy King, he has got his, the club's best intentions at the heart because he's been here for so long and he knows the values of the owners and stuff like that. Yeah, I wasn't saying, I, I was saying as in that I agree with what Andy King's yeah. saying, but yeah, we, we've sort of reached the limit of how far we could go with our current transfer strategy. I don't think we can sort of push that much further with it. I do think we need to sort of... I think we keep to what we're doing in terms of still bringing in a lot of young players, but I do still think sort of occasionally we will need to bring in a marquee signing as well. Like, just Leon Bailey, go and get him, you know, do it. The only problem you've got with marquee signings is we'll struggle with wages. Yeah. And break the wage structure. Um, but then we've got people that are on stupid wages, like Daniel Armati is on forty-five. I think it was, I think I read forty k a week. Matty James, yeah, Matty well. James, thirty-five. Are you joking? Maximum twenty for both. Adrian Silva's on eighty, I think. Yeah. And there we go. And we're paying half of that wage while he's at Monaco. It's a waste of money. And that that leads down to our, our recruitment again because it's woeful recruit, recruitment from John Rudkin. See, I think Daniel Marty could be a good, good squad player if we speak about the Europa League. He's just not kept himself fit. But once he gets a good run in the side, he does look all right, I think. But the issue is, it's just, is the other players like the Adrian Silvers, the Simanis that are just taking up so much of the wage and they're just like, I'm going to get this wage anywhere else. So I'm just going to run out my contract and get as much money as I possibly can because I'm not getting this amount of money from this good a team anywhere so, soon. If you, look at the, if you look at the latest wage table, Silver's on 80 grand. Slimane is on 80 grand. Wes Morgan's on 60 grand. Jeez. 60 grand for Wes Morgan. And we've well. extended that contract. And, and, I, and I feel like we've extended that with, with a loyalty bonus as well. And I'm not going to mm. lie. I feel like he's got more, genuinely. Yeah. Uh, Gazelle's on 45 grand. Oh, worth every penny, mate. Leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's... I said it at the time and stuff. I didn't agree with like giving Jakubovic a new contract. Wes Morgan's one seemed like sentimental sentimentality. The only one I could see sort of the logic behind was Fuchs, and I still didn't massively agree with that either. But if you lot, I think his was more of the 
they knew that Ben Hill was potentially going to go, and you've got zero people at left back as well. So yeah, but- they needed somebody in that. They might as well sign Fuchs on a, an extra contract just for a year, because whatever happens with if Joel does go, which I, I, I agree, I think he will do, then what's next? Because we would have zero people in that position. And if we go going, hey, we need a centre, we need a left back. They'll go, oh, remember what you did to Man United? Well, we're just going to do exactly the same to you. Mm. So, yeah. So, as I say, and yeah, I, I get the point that, like, Fuchs is the only one that makes sense. But what did you, did you, I know we talked about it at the time, but with Wes Morgan and Jakubovic, I just, I really don't understand either of those getting extended contracts when we're already tight for money as it is. Wes Morgan, I think he's going to go on to a coaching role here at the club. That's why I think he's got that. You keep the bitch. I feel like a third goalkeeper is needed. You know, I think we've let go of that young guy, Johansson. I'm pretty sure he might have gone now. I'm not not too sure on that one. So I do agree with both of those. But I think this summer it's time to shift out the Salamanis, the the Silvers, uh, uh, Matt, and Matt and James because he's just not going to play. Like, there's no point in keeping players like that. And you might as well just go and spend that wage on a foreign player that's actually good enough because you know foreign wages are crap. They are crap. I think the West right. Morgan thing we said at the time. If he wants to be a coach, then put him on a coaching wage. Don't pay him 60 grand a week. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. But I feel like, because of his loyalty, and you know how, how good the owners are, yeah. they, they'll do that. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, Rudkin needs to be a bit better in the transfer market and actually pull his finger out. But I think that's the problem. <clears throat> Transfers, as we know, scouts scout them. They go to the scout, head of scouts, which is Conjurton. Conjurton then talks to Rudkin to buy them. If Conjurton's not seeing anyone, then Rudkin won't make any approaches. And I think that's going to be our problem. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Fair. It's just, we just need to go and rate, as I say, just raid the old Premier League clubs and get some good stuff. But, but I think Jakubovic and Danny Ward could be good in the Europa League. I think that's potentially why they've done it. If they're looking at Champions League, we just need to depth the squad. I mean, I think they both can still do a good job. I think with that, the one with Jakubovic, I would have let him go and then promoted Iverson if we need a third choice yeah. keeper. Because now we've got four active keepers. Yeah, actually, I forgot about I- Iverson. He did well at Rotherham as well last season. Very, very good. Yeah. So unless we're going to send him out on loan again next season, which, which would mean, which I I don't know. I, it seems a strange one, but we've give, we've now got four active keepers. I just don't know. I think we've panicked. I think we, I think we have panicked, to be honest. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I think the squad depth can, can be achieved, but basically we're going to have to just steal every single under-23 players that are doing well, but every single one. And the people that are on loan that, that have gone to other clubs now. So maybe that could be a reason to stay, because I know we've lost a few of them to... Uh, like Sc- Scottish teams and stuff like that now, so it could be a way for them to get Europa League experience, which is a 18 year old, a 20 year old, is something that you really want. Mm. The thing is, like, it's all good bringing these youth players through and stuff, but if they're not ready and we're playing them in the Europa League, then we're not going to do particularly well in it if we're reliant on players who aren't ready. Yeah. And let's not forget, in October, the under 23s will start playing again. Say that again, sorry, James. In October, the under-23 start playing again. I don't think under-23s have played during lockdown. So, mm. so, the, so the under-23s are training with the first team. That will change again, so we might not get as many youngsters coming through. Well, might, there not, might not be any left if we don't sign anybody because we'd have to take all of them. <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> right, guys. It's it is frustrating, crazy. though. <laughs> yeah, it's... it is frustrating seeing, seeing that the... Every other team going out there buying players. You look at your Southampton. Brighton have made two brilliant signings already. And I'm just wondering with the Lalana deal, I know people didn't want him there, but for squad depth, he would have been not right, in my personal opinion. If we and get have, we not, have we not signed Lalana due to maybe his injuries or due to the fact that, oh, we're actually going to go out there and get someone? Are we waiting? Are we playing a late game and we're going to go and sign players later on in the window? Or are we just not going to sign anyone? <laughs> I, I personally think the Lallana deal, I think our view was we were going to get Champions League and there's better players out there that we can get for the Champions League. Then we didn't get it. And I think the Lallana deal with Brian had already been done by then. 
that that could make sense. That makes a lot of sense. Right, guys, it's been great talking to you all. Uh, we're all back next week. Um, nearly back next week. Yeah, I'm here. Are we doing the end of season awards next week? We will, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see, but that's, that's in the works. So we'll, we'll have a meeting about it and, and we'll, we'll see because hopefully that should be a good one because there's a lot of stuff to get organised for that one. But really looking forward to bringing that to everybody. Right, we'll try our best to get some sorted for next week. Right, thanks everyone.